it, we're going to talk primarily about what we call novelty selling strategies. I've seen a lot of different uh, sales campaigns, a lot of different experiments go out lately, and this was an important element that was missing in a lot of them. And let me explain a little bit about how this works and why you want to work with, work with this particular strategy. A few weeks back, we talked about a strategy known as getting appointments using products, and what this talked about was using smaller products to achieve more appointments to then upsell to greater opportunities. This is similar in nature, but it's different in that we're focusing not only on smaller products that have more conversations, but we're using products that have some type of a timing element involved with them. The reason being is there's a part of our brain, notice the anterior cingulate, and this part of the brain is designed to detect novelties, anything that's new. It was designed this way in order to help us identify anything that may be a threat. But it also creates pleasure, and we'll talk about that later. But the reason why this is so important in all of our campaigns is because our prospects are experiencing, experiencing an information overload. And so what happens is if we don't provide something that breaks a pattern, there's no way we're going to get past the gatekeeper inside of their brain. The brain is designed to help process lots of great information. In order to do so, it uses patterns and says, look, this is just a spam email or this is just a marketing message, so just discard it. And so if your email looks like other emails or if it has the same feeling, it doesn't matter what the content is, it's always going to be classified in the same group regardless of the content. And one of the best ways to overcome these patterns is using novelty. And so every sales and marketing campaign needs to have some type of a novelty or timing element involved in the messaging in order to break patterns that would otherwise cause your prospects to discard your messages. So these timing elements can be a lot of different things. But let me just walk you through a few examples to help you understand what this would look like. So, for instance, a lot of folks like to sell fiber. And typically, they'll pull a list of fiber buildings and email the prospects and see if they're interested. Now, this is great because it's easy, right? You just grab the fiber list from the provider, contact the, in the individuals. You can go to tenantlist.org, pull a list. But a more effective way is if somebody's building fiber or passing fiber near their building, this is the timing that makes the messaging much more relevant to them. You can say, look, this is an opportunity where we're building fiber along your street, so somebody else is already paying for the construction. If you take advantage of it now while we're doing the process, it'll be a lot easier for you to take advantage of this that timing element makes all the difference. It then breaks the pattern for the prospect. A lot of times suppliers are also changing or upgrading the fiber. Maybe they have different speeds. Maybe they have more asymmetrical type bandwidth solutions or it has more intelligent bandwidth. Maybe they're enabling QoS over their bandwidth. And so looking for new upgrades to the actual bandwidth itself will also make it easier for you to have discussions. That's another timing element. Um, this is one that I came across just recently where Big Leaf has upgraded their risk monitoring capabilities. This is something that may work well with, for instance, a lot of hospitals are being targeted in the last month or so by different Russian hackers. And this would also be another timing element, maybe being able to combine the two. But the fact that there's something has changed recently. Those are the types of things that we're looking for. Another example is Effortless achieves corporate sustainability by operating in switch data centers. So switch data centers are 100% um, natural energy sources. And so there's a number of companies that you can reach out to that focus on providing sustainable type products and services but they can't really do that unless they're using the right type of data center. So you could run upsell reports to see who their current data center provider is, see if they would like to upgrade to a different data center provider that would help them achieve their goals and actually be where they need to be. 
And so these are the different timing elements that you can introduce into this discussion, but you can talk about these things. If it's new, it'll help break the mold and make the conversations more relevant. Also, outages. You can go to downdetector.com. You can track companies' outages through Ansible. But the ultimate goal is you can say, look, you may not have been affected, but this just happened. Have you thought about backup? What are your plans? Product launches. So again, these are related to some of the things that we've talked about before, but this is general. You can find these typically either through Ansible, through the vendor updates, or you can find that if you go to the different news sections of the suppliers that you focus on, you often there's usually at least one or two upgrades or integrations or changes to the product set at least once a month with the most of these providers. You may also find companies who are experiencing downturns or expansions, um, you know, anything related to pandemics. For instance, there was a company who offers a fairly large 401k company, and the only way they were able to manage their platform was in the office, but because their office was in lockdown, they didn't have access to the system that allowed them to actually manage the accounts, believe it or not. And this is a company with more than 10,000 employees. I'm not going to mention any names but they weren't able to actual process requests or engage with their clients because of the pandemic. So these are things that would definitely be, uh, again, it's not necessarily, it's a little bit different from timing elements in that, yes, this is a timing element, This is, but there's something else happening where there's change and it's relevant at this time and, and it would be important to address this now rather than later. There's also a lot of market shifts. What this is specifically relating to is companies that are shifting. We've seen a lot of shifts over the years, right? A lot of companies are moving to SD-WAN. A lot of companies over the last 10 to 15 years have moved to UCAS. Um, there's other shifts taking place, even in between different email platforms or security platforms. But this is one of the elements we'll talk about another day, but you can detect these trends through Ansible because we monitor all the different software usages across businesses and we can see where companies are leading in terms of which software pop, which softwares are either growing in terms of usage or shrinking and how is that going to affect your clients. And so helping them stay ahead of those types of things and talking to them about this is what we're seeing, this is what's happening is really helpful in adding those elements to those emails. And again, anything that has a new timing element that would be relevant to your client helps the email get past the brain's gatekeeper. This is an example, <clears throat> if you, just on the Ring Central website, I was looking at it today. Um, it shows that Ring Central is now available in the AWS Active Console. What this means is essentially it's a lot easier to access AWS as a, as a, as a built on solution for AWS clients. Wouldn't be hard to find AWS clients if you go to ensable.com slash data. And this is something you could talk to them about and say, look, you are using AWS. Why don't you make the connection to your U UCAS platform more seamless? Um, and then talk to them about why and what you would do with that. Here's an example of what you would see in your Pareto or Opportunities Report through Ensable. So we try to keep track of the different news and changes across different vendors. So if your customer is using a particular vendor, this will help you identify that, those different changes. If you need contacts, as always, you need, just need to go to upsellreport.com. And just to wrap up, um, I realize there's a lot of people that haven't gotten the response rates from their different marketing campaigns that they're doing. And this particular training will, is designed to help you move the needle a little bit in terms of getting more responses. And again, the main reason why we don't get responses from marketing campaigns is because it falls into a pattern. These patterns are what our brain uses to help manage lots of information which is increasing every single day. That's why our marketing campaigns in general 
have lost their efficacy because the information overload is causing the patterns to get stronger. And so in order to break those patterns, we need something that's new. And what this does is it helps alert the brain that they need to look at this from a different angle. But also any new elements also provide dopamine to the brain, which creates a pleasure effect for them, something that they enjoy, something that, that would be valuable to them. And so it provides that double advantage when you're trying to do marketing campaigns. So whenever you're sending out emails or reaching out to clients, always remember to add some type of new element to the discussion and that way you'll be able to reach your clients and prospects more effectively. 